You've heard me say that if you're a conservative, Facebook is not your friend. Well, we've got a whistleblower. Ladies and gentlemen, children of all ages, welcome to the Conservative Circus with James T. Harris. Back in 2016, when I started doing uh, videos on uh, FaceTime or uh, on the Facebook, those videos started to take off. We were getting 10 million, 20 million hits. I do believe that uh, conservatives like myself that were using that platform are part of the reason why the president became, uh, Donald Trump became president of the United States. But then around 2018, uh, we had the screws turned on us. We were getting thrown in Facebook jail for memes. We're getting uh, thrown in for conservative commentary. We're getting uh, the algorithms changed and knocked down. And people thought we were crazy. People thought that I was too full of myself. We've come to learn that, uh, no, actually I wasn't, that uh, Facebook and other platforms do not like conservative content and they despise President Trump. Ryan Hartwig of Mesa is the in, at the center of another Project Veritas report which demonstrates rampant censorship of conservative content by Facebook and he is in the center ring of the conservative circus. Orion, when you began at Facebook, were what were your expectations? Did you go in as a conservative? Yeah, when um, thanks for having me on, James. Uh, when I went in as a conservative, uh, when I went in, yeah, I, I was I was a conservative. I've been a conservative all my life. I grew up in Mesa. Um, so when I started, I didn't know it was Facebook until like the last interview until I got hired on. And um, yeah, in my first one well, of my first training meetings. In a, in a group setting, our trainer said, you know, was openly bragging about how Obama is her Patronus charm. So I kind of had an inkling of what might have been happening, but what what I saw and what I documented really shocked me. You know, you went in as a content moderator. Um, I'm going to ask you, or let me ask you about what, what that role is. As a content moderator, what are you doing for, for Facebook? Yeah, so a content moderator, basically, um, you, you get post that people have made on, on Facebook and Instagram on your screen and you decide whether to remove the post or leave it on the platform. Um, that, you know, you see, you see a lot of stuff, graphic violence, nudity, all kinds, all sorts of stuff, but a, a lot of, I saw a lot of election related material as well. So the, the the election related material. Let me talk about that for a second because as I was saying, you know, back in the ninth or early 2016, 2017, we were uh, people like me were heavy players. We were getting a lot of action uh, on Facebook, mm -hmm. a lot of follows, a lot of shares. Am I wrong when I, when I said that we began to get tapped down? That we were like targeted purposefully uh, to sort of uh, knock down our message or to wipe it out altogether? Yeah, no. The evidence is clear and based on, on posts I've documented. That specifically target, you know, MAGA and conservative individuals. Um, you know, I have a post. I, I have a post that I, I, I saw from August um, first during the midterms, for example, where you know Facebook is at, at, asking the moderators to that they urgently urgently need visibility in the any content related to the debate. So you know, and, and going back to 2016, you know, you know, they Facebook failed. They wanted to ensure Hillary Clinton won, and so they. They framed it as, oh, you know, there was an election fraud. We need to bring content moderators to the U.S. So before 2016, there were less content moderators in the U.S. But after that, they paid, you know, obviously it's expensive to bring uh, people to the U.S. or have people, hire, hire people in the U.S. But yeah, our project started in 2017 with Cognizant. I was a subcontractor for Cognizant for Facebook. And um, yeah, they really started what they wanted to know what was going on. So we've provided visibility into what's happening on the, on the platform in the United States and that allowed them to tamper down on conservatives. In the center ring of the conservative circus, we have Ryan Hartwick. He is a whistleblower uh, at Facebook. If you want to see that Project Veritas hit, I have it up on uh, Facebook right now, my Facebook page, just for kicks and giggles. And James Harris <laughs> Media. Yeah, Ryan, what was the most surprising part of your time at Facebook, and, and how did you come to help out Project Veritas? Yeah, um, probably the most surprising part um it was just how open they were. Now, after I started in April, in March of 2018, and in April of that year, Zuckerberg testified in front of Congress, 
And then so, and I, and we, there was a civic audit that went on from, uh, with some, former Senator John Kyle. So they were more careful after, after time. Um, but I, yeah, at the beginning, it was just, they're very openly biased and giving exce- exceptions, granting exceptions for that would target MAGA people. A great example I have is in, um, from on July 6th of 2018, there was a post that said, Hey, there's this trending viral video of a 16 year old in Texas who got a, th- a drink thrown at him and, and they took off his hat. They attacked him. And the guidance on that post, even though it was viral, um, they knew it was viral. They said, Oh, because the, the adult was cursing at the minor, we're going to delete this content. So they basically worked with, worked, you know, had a new, there was a nuance in the policy where they could, where they made an exception to, to believe that. It, it, it was viral. So they were kind of make they were kind of making things up, or coming up with excuses to knock things down, uh, or or to take them off of the platform. I got like a moment, a minute or two here left here. I want to ask you a serious question, Ryan. I thank you very much for coming on and being a whistleblower. And again, you can see that it's posted on my Facebook page right now. It's a YouTube video, Project Veritas. What should conservatives do? Should we continue to work with Facebook, or is there another site out there that uh, uh, that uh, conservatives should be looking at? Uh, will they ever get a fair shake at a Facebook? Uh, I don't really think there's much hope, to be honest, with, with Facebook. I think there needs to be government um, regulation. I think their their two second two thirty rights need to be taken away. I don't think it's possible. They just have such a stranglehold on on um, on the whole you know public discourse. So yeah, it's it's. There's not too much of hope with Facebook, uh, I'll be honest. I want to thank you very much. Uh, that's Ryan Hartwick. He worked inside of Facebook. See, I've been telling you for years. I've been telling you for years. And now this Project Veritas has has verified it. Now, this is the second whistleblower, I do believe, from uh, from Facebook. Um, but we, we're not going to have a shot, even if the government regulators come in. I will tell you this, though. There is another site out there. It's called Parlor. Parlor. And a lot of conservatives are exiting the Twitter, exiting Twitter and heading over to Parlor. I am already there. And I'm already posting over there. Uh, but I think that uh, if President Trump ends up leaving Twitter and going to Parler, that's going to be the death of Twitter. I think Facebook is is making it difficult uh, for for people like conservatives to do their business. People will still use it, but it's not going to become the hot spot any longer as the gig is up. We know what they're doing because should no longer uh, feed uh, that beast.